Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have put together my favorite DIY projects using multiple sizes of tin cans and flipping them into some amazing home decor pieces. Now this video is broken into chapters so you can choose the project that you would love to create. So let's jump in and get started. Now this project is a planter wall sconce decor. Now I'm going to be needing two regular size vegetable cans. And I'm going to need one garden fence section from the Dollar Tree, or you can get them for a dollar at Family Dollar. Now I'm going to start off with the fence section for this project. Now I only need two sections for this project, and I want them to be as perfect as possible. So I'm going to use the end sections. So I'm just going to cut off each end section wider than that line because I'll just do some manual trimming. And I like to do this with a sharp pair of scissors. Now I realize that some of people have some trouble cutting these with their scissors, but you could use scissors, a hot knife, you can use wire clippers, anything that makes you feel more comfortable and makes it easier on you. So I'm just going to cut off those two end pieces, remove those stakes from the bottom and all of the little eclipses. Now this is probably one of my favorite little tools here. This is a miniature wire clipper or a jewelry wire, wire clipper and it gets in those small little spots without making it look too jagged. And here is what the end project is. It is two easy and clean cut fence pieces. So now I'm just going to go ahead and scoot those to the side and start working on my cans. Now you can paint these if you want to, but I didn't want the ridges to show. So what I decided to use was some of this Dollar Tree faux leather in the color white. I thought that would be perfect for covering up the cans and you don't see none of those ridges on there if you don't want to see them. So I'm measuring out the length of the can here. And again, I'm just gonna take my metal ruler, make sure I get that measurement down and then cut it with a utility blade. These utility blades come in handy for so many things and it cuts through this faux leather like butter so now I'm just double checking to make sure it fits and we are going to be needing two strips of these so I'm gonna cut a second one out and now it's time to cover our cans. So to cover them is really, really easy. I like to, of course, just add a bead of that hot glue on there, line it up as even as possible. And then I'm just wrapping the leather around. Now I wouldn't suggest putting beads around as you go because it leaves a little lump where that hot glue is. I only glue it at the beginning and at the end. You just wanna make sure that your leather is pulled really, really tight. So once you get your half inch overlap, add some glue there. There, press it down and now it's smooth all the way around your can now you can go back and do a little housekeeping and clean up around the edges if you need to but this turns out really well and here are both cans all completely covered now I love this little ticking stripe ribbon. It almost looks like film. I know a lot of you have said it looks like film, but I think it's so cute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to wrap around my cans and I am gonna cut it, cut four of these pieces out, making sure I have a half inch overlap. Now sometimes this grow gray ribbon can fray, so I'm using my lighter. This is just an easy way to seal off the ends and keep it from fraying once you add it to your project. And now we could just add it to the can. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it near the top. Again, you wanna pull it really tight and when you do adhere it, you're gonna adhere one end of the ribbon on top of the actual ribbon, not to the leather. This allows you room to kind of move it around, shift it if you need to, and even slide it off if you don't want it on there anymore. So I love projects with flexibility like this. And we're gonna do two of these ribbons for each one of the cans and here is what they look like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the back where the seam is and we're going to be drilling two holes in the back here. We're going to drill them up right in the center of the back of the can where that seam is. And of course, if you don't have a drill, a hammer and nail will do the job, but always think about getting a drill because it makes your project so much easier. So I'm using a 532nd inch drill bit here and I'm going to make two holes as shown here side by side about an inch apart or so. So we're going to do this for both of the cans and we're going to drill right through the leather all the way through the can. Grab some of those zip ties. This is how we are going to be attaching these to those fence pieces. 
So to attach these, what we're going to do is we're going to feed the zip tie through the back of the can first. And once we feed it through in, we're just going to loop it around and go back out the other hole that's right beside it. So now that that kind of grabs onto the can, we're just going to shift it down and make sure everything is nice and flush. So we're going to do this for both of our cans and now grab those fence pieces. We are going to attach each can to the front of the fence piece and then wrap that zip tie around that center piece as shown here. Now once you feed it through, you do want to pull your zip tie as tight as possible because you want this can to be nice and sturdy attached to your garden fence piece. So you just want to pull it through, just kind of make sure it's nice and secure there. Go ahead and test it out by giving it a shake and mine is very secure there it's not going anywhere go ahead and do that for your second one as well so now all you have to do is make any final adjustments and tightening go ahead and just start clipping off those tails on the back now once I do that, I wanted to reinforce it just a little bit. I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm going to add glue right under that zip tie along the back of that fence piece. Now what this does is keep this zip tied piece in place and keeps it from sliding up and down. That way it stays secure and you don't have to worry about it shifting. We're going to do this for each one of our garden fence pieces. Now here are both pieces. They're all nice and secure to the back. And now the fun part is decorating. Now how simple was that? You have two beautiful wall planters now. Now I love the clean look and simplicity of these and they can be neutral or you can even add some seasonal filler like for Halloween or Christmas or even any holiday that you want to. There are so many options for these items and I hope that this inspires you to get it recreated. Now this project is a marble style vanity decor piece. Now for this, I'm using one of those family size of vegetable cans. I'm going to be using some marble contact paper and you can get this from the Dollar Tree. And to accent it, I'm going to be using some gold metallic acrylic paint. So I'm going to start off with my can and my metallic paint. I'm only going to be painting the top edge and the bottom edge with the metallic paint. Now I'm always going to shake up all of your acrylic paints when they've been sitting for a while. You want to make sure that color is nice and distributed. And I'm going to paint only the top and the bottom edge. Now I did have to put on several coats of this gold. So you can opt for spray paint or even use some Cricut vinyl or something like that if you want to. But it did take me three coats to get this solid coverage. So once that has dried, we are ready to add some marble accents to our can. So I'm going to go ahead and measure the can to make sure I have my piece cut wide enough. And I found it three to three and a quarter inches was just about my comfortable spot with cutting the width of this marble stick and peel sheet. So I'm measuring it out, making sure the line is going to be nice and straight. And then to cut it is really easy. I'm just going to be using a utility blade. This um, vinyl does cut really simple. It's actually really, really cute. I'm really surprised that Dollar Tree now has marble. So I'm excited to use this in one of my projects. So now that it's cut and good to go, we can start adding this to our can. Now a good way to line this up and get it um, applied is I like to start at the seam of the can to make sure it's even all the way around. And then I will go in and start peeling away and applying it small bits at a time. I find that it makes it very easy. So I'm just going to start applying it really, really carefully, wrapping it around the can, peeling away the bottom. Now for the overlap, you only want it overlapping about a half an inch because you don't want too much bulk. So it's easy just to cut it away with a pair of scissors and smooth it down. And now just make sure everything is nice and adhered. And oh my goodness, now you have a gold trimmed marble container. And look at how super sweet it turned out. 
Now all I did was take some Dollar Tree roses and I placed them inside for a cute little arrangement. Now you could use this as a planter or even for things like makeup brushes on your vanity. And of course, if you want to keep it neutral, you can just add regular plants, you can add supplies, you can use kitchen utensils, it's all up to you. I hope that you give this one a try. Now this project is a lattice panel fence decor. We're going to need one of these white lattice fence panels from the Dollar Tree and one sheet of this blue patterned wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need three regular size recycled cans. Now we are going to start with the cans, so we're going to go ahead and grab the cans and our patterned wallpaper piece. Now I do, am going to be cutting three pieces of this wallpaper, so I'll be cutting three strips out of it to cover each one of my cans. Now I am going to use my metal ruler to kind of make a guide, and I'm making sure that the width of the strip that I cut is about at least three quarters of an inch longer than the width of the can. I'm doing a little test roll here to make sure everything is good, and we're going to cut two more out, and here are all three of them cut and ready to go. So now that we have all three strips cut, I am going to just test fit it to see how I want to apply it just to make sure that it looks okay. We could start peeling away the backing and I first started at one end, but I did find that starting um, a little bit inward works better. So I peeled it up and added it a little bit more inward right along that edge and then started to slowly apply that wallpaper piece in place. Now I am using a gentle hand with this because I noticed that it will take hair if handled roughly, but you, it does smooth out really even around the can. So we're going to take that overlapping edge and what we're going to do is use our utility blade and I'm just going to cut little notches in that or little slices in that overlap about every inch because we will be folding it to the inside of the can. And I find that making those slices makes a nice even fold and prevents any wrinkling along the edge. And here is what one of the finished cans looks like. We're just going to repeat this for the other two and now we have all three. Now I did decide to cover the bottoms of them with some white acrylic paint. Now you could definitely do this before applying the little wallpaper sheet, but I didn't decide to do this until after I started the project. So I'm just going to apply two coats of acrylic paint, letting them dry in between the coats. And here is what that looks like. Now you can um, paint the inside as well, but since I may put real plants inside, I decide to leave them natural. So now what we're going to do is take our cans and we need to drill some holes in them to apply to our lattice fence panel. So I am going to be using a drill bit large enough to fit some zip ties in. And what I'm going to do is I need to take my ruler so I can measure down how far down I want my holes. So I decided to go with about an inch and a quarter down and I'm just making a little line with my Sharpie. And then once I make that line, I am going to drill two holes on that line about an inch apart on that back. Now you just want to be um, aware that where you drill your holes is where that seam of that wallpaper is so you want that facing the back so you won't see it from the front of the project now here are the two holes in this can um, and then we're just going to repeat this for the other two cans okay all three of our cans have our two holes in them and they're now ready to go Okay, so now we can grab our lattice fences, go ahead and remove the tags, and then we're going to remove the little side clips on the side. I'm using a pair of wire clippers. It, it removes it pretty easy. These other ones on this side were a little challenging, but if you have a sharp pair of wire cutters, it clips right through there. So you just want to be carefully just nipping it away small bits at a time to prevent the piece from cracking, and then you'll see it'll end up with a nice smooth cut. We're going to do that for both of those pieces, and now we can see that both sides now have a smooth edge without that little clamp on there. So the next piece we're going to remove is the little stakes at the bottom. We won't need this for the project. And again, you want to take it easy on these two to avoid your piece from cracking. Now you are going to, we are going to be repurposing that little stake there or actually both of the stakes. So make sure you cut them off in one solid piece and then trim off any burrs at that connection. 
Now, if you notice, one side of the panel is smooth, but this side has the notches where you cut off those little grips out. Now, this is where those stakes will come into play. We are gonna use these to insert them on the back side to cover up those holes in the side. So we're just gonna repurpose these. Now, one of them is a bit too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut about an inch or so off of it so it'll fit inside of that groove on the back. Now, I'm just gonna do a test fit and it looks like it will cover those openings perfect so we're just going to apply these with some hot glue now i am applying these with the flat side facing down on the actual fence panel and placing it snug against that edge where that opening is and this should really camouflage that opening and make it look nice and clean So now that once it's that that's done, we are going to start to determine where we want our can. So of course we'll have one in the middle and two on each side. We just need to make sure that they're going to be evenly spaced apart. So I'm going to determine the right side first. So I am just going to go ahead and drill two holes about an inch and a quarter apart on that side. And then at the same location on the opposite side, do that. And then finally two holes in the middle. So now we have three places on our fence panel to apply our little decorated cans. Now to apply these to the fence panel, I'm gonna be using some of these Dollar Tree zip ties. These white ones come in a 60 pack, which is a huge deal. If you guys can get your hands on them, go ahead and get those great for crafting. So I'm going to insert one of these zip ties in each one of the holes on the fence panel first. And then once those are all in, I can go ahead and start applying my cans. Now I'm going to take the end of the zip tie, go inside the can, I'll loop it around back out the other side of the can, and then finally back through to the back of the fence panel. Now you just want to pull the zip tie tails in the back tight. You don't want to secure them at this time because you may need to do some adjusting. Just go ahead and apply all three in place first just in case you want to swap some out or there's some repeated patterns and then once it looks good you could go ahead and secure all three of those zip ties in the back of your fence panel and then once they're tight just go ahead and clip off all of those tails and here they are nice and secure to your panel so now what we're going to work on is our hang tie. So I'm going to be using some of this Dollar Tree jute twine. I'm going to cut two pieces and then tie knots on each end as shown here. These pieces are about three inches long, but we're going to make a loop for each end of the back of our little fence. Now I didn't want to drill any holes in the fence and this is why I'm going to apply these loops in the back this way. So I'm gonna fold that little loop in half and I'm gonna place it in each one of those end pieces of the fence as shown here and just put heaping amounts of that hot glue on top of those knots, letting them completely dry. Now, once they dry, this loop is set. It will hold all of your plants and decor in there without a problem. It really does do a great job of bonding to the plastic on this fence. You wanna do this on both sides. Here are both sides with that glue. You see I used a very generous amount and let this dry completely. So once it's dry, we can flip it over and now we could decide what we wanna add to our little decorative cans. I have some bundles of eucalyptus. I always use these from Walmart. They're really inexpensive and they're very versatile. I'm just gonna stick one in each one of my can planters on the front. And then if you like, you can add some accessories like this farmhouse bead or anything that you like. And now it's time to hang it up. And you guys, this turned out so amazing. Now I had been looking for these fence pieces for so long at the Dollar Tree, and I'm so excited to create this cute wall decor piece with it. Now there's so many ways to decorate with this and I know you all are so creative and will come up with some awesome uses for this piece as well. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. This project is a wood trimmed planter decor. Now I'm going to be starting off with one of these tall soup cans that I had on hand. I'm also going to be using one of these 60 count craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. 
And we're going to go ahead and open up those craft sticks and grab a bunch out. We don't even need half of this package, but you always want to get a full package so you can separate all of the warped pieces. Now we're going to be lining the outside of this can with these craft sticks. These are actually really good for this type of project. Now when I line these up, I'm going to line it up where the ends overlap. And you can use a couple of things to cut this. Now I prefer a sharp pair of scissors. That's what I used most often for these projects. I cut one end straight, use my pencil to mark the other end, and then cut the other end straight. I'm doing a recheck of the measurement, and once it is the perfect size, I am using some wood hot glue to actually adhere this to my cans. I find this adhesive to be very good for these types of projects, so I'm just going to adhere it to the side of the can, making sure it's as straight as possible. Now for the second craft stick, you're just going to lay it against the first with the ends overlapping. And again, I'm going to trace those end markings off to make sure we know where to cut. Now you can use scissors, you can use a utility blade, but this time I'm going to break out one of my new tools that I just got, which is this miter cutter. You could get this from Amazon. This is really fun and it actually is easier on the hands. So you lay it down on the miter cutter and press down and you can see it just snaps off the ends on those lines and then your hands don't get as tired so I'm gonna lay this on there it is perfectly cut and then I'm just gonna adhere it around all the way around like I did before and now we're done so there is a tiny little sliver just left on there and I'm just gonna grab another one of those craft sticks and my utility blade to take care of this so I'm using my metal ruler laying it on top of one of those craft sticks and just cutting out the tiniest little piece now you only have to drag it across two or three times and then that piece will just come right off and as you can see it fits right down in that little opening so that will be perfect to resolve this issue. I'm using my scissors to cut off the ends here and then I'm going to adhere it in place and again I'm going to be using my wood hot glue to do this just a nice thin little bead and then sliding it down in that gap and that resolves the issue and it looks perfect. Your whole can is nice and covered. So now's the fun part is staining. So what I decided to use was Waverly Antique Wax for my stain. You can of course use traditional stain or you can use diluted acrylic paint if you like to. So um, my Waverly Antique Wax was already diluted. I did put water in my container since I'm down to the very bottom, but I'm going to apply a coat all over the can. And as you can see, it has a really pretty color. Now make sure when you do finish, go over it with a paper towel to wipe off all of the excess wax this will allow it to dry a lot faster. So now that it's dry, we are going to trim it out with some ribbon. Now I have some grow grain ribbon here I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut two pieces around. Now the length um, is one time around plus about a half an inch so you'll have some overlap there and then it will give you the perfect round. Now the effect I'm trying to achieve here is almost the look like one of those wood barrels so I thought this would be the perfect accent. Now when you glue this on, you're gluing the ribbon on top of the other end. You're not actually gluing it to the wood so this would allow you to make any adjustments by sliding it up and down or you can actually remove it if you don't like it and your wood surface is not damaged so I'm going to add this to both the top and the bottom press it down and then make any adjustments and now your can is ready for decoration once you get that in place Now to decorate these, I'm just taking some of these little greenery bundles. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute. So I grabbed two of the greenery bundles and I stuck that inside. I think this is so adorable. And here it is, you guys, a beautiful wood trimmed planter that is great for any space. Now you can add any faux greenery of your choice or you can even use real plants. Just be sure to drill the drain holes in the bottom of your can. Now you guys have to let me know how you would decorate with this project in the comments below. I really hope that you all are enjoying these crafts so far, but I wanted to pop in really quick and let you all know that you could follow me on all of these platforms as she so craft D E E. So now let's jump right into that next DIY. We're going to need one of these tall soup cans and one regular veggie can. 
We're going to need two wood slices and these are sold in the Dollar Tree in two packs and we're going to grab a pack of these wood acorns from the Dollar Tree. We're going to grab those two cans first and give them a nice coat or two of some white spray paint, acrylic paint, or chalk paint. Now while those dry, go ahead and grab those wood rounds. These are actually going to work as lids for our cans. So in order to have a, a little knob on our lids, I thought these acorns would be perfect for that. So I'm going to grab two of these acorns and um, I'm going to um, add them to the top. Now what I did notice is I wanted them to lay flush to the wood, but you notice there's a little nub at the bottom of the acorn. Easy, res easy to resolve. All we're going to do is grab some high grit sandpaper, a 40, 60, even 100, and just grind the bottom of that acorn down until it's nice and smooth and flush as shown here. So now these are prepared and ready to add to our wood slices. We're going to add one to each of the centers of this. Now, preferably, I would screw these in from the bottom, but but for the sake of time and since this is a lightweight project I am going to use wood glue you guys I love this wood glue from the Dollar Tree it works as good as the Gorilla Glue on any name brand so I'm going to add wood glue to the center there and then I'm going to add my acorn on top of that wood glue now you want to let this sit and dry for three four hours to make sure it's completely dry and adhered and once it is this acorn will stay in place it's nice and secure great for lightweight projects so now grab those cans. You see they're all nice and dry now and we are going to be adding some labels. Now originally I wanted to use these neutral labels from the Dollar Tree but they were kind of small. So I made my own out of craft paper and I just freehanded this little design here. I kind of like the little arch in the middle so that's what I'm going to add. But I am going to add an accent to it. I love ticking stripes. So I'm taking a chalk marker and I'm just adding ticking stripes all the way around my little arched label piece just to give it a different accent. Accent. And so here are both of my pieces. They're all ready to go. And now we can add them to our cans. Now to add them is really simple. I just like to use some hot glue. I just want to make sure I go around as close to the edge as possible to make sure it lays completely fat, flat. And you can align them using the ridges of the can. So once we add these to both of them, I am loving this. I wanted to have these very neutral so I can use them year round. And now just grab your wood slice rounds. You can place one on top. Now, of course, you can probably use some nautical or jute rope on the inside of these wood rounds to kind of make a ledge. But since this is going to be sitting or filled on my shelves, I didn't find a need to add it, but definitely add it if you're worried about your lids sliding off. And how simple was that? So now you have beautiful, two beautiful cans and containers with a minimal touch for your decor. Now you can add greenery if you like. You can use these for storage. However you choose to use them, they would make a really cute accent all year round. Now I do hope you guys have as much fun as I did creating these. So this project is a hanging decor piece. Now for this, we're going to need three of your regular size vegetable cans. And I'm going to need this three segment MDF wood piece that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. We're going to start off with our cans and I'm going to go ahead and spray paint them a couple of coats of this white. You could definitely use chalk paint or acrylic paint if you like, but spray paint was a lot quicker for me. Now here are all of our cans, all nice and spray painted and dried and ready to go. Now grab that three segment piece and we're going to start putting, um, making all the measurements for putting all of our cans on our piece. Now these segmented pieces come in a stained color that I'm using, white and also natural so you can choose whichever ones you want. So I'm placing the cans on top and I'm trying to determine my spacing because I want room to put some greenery inside some of my cans. So I found that for the bottom can, I'm going to let the bottom tail of it kind of hang off about an 
inch or inch and a half. I thought that was perfect. So in order to attach them, I'm going to be drilling two holes in the back of the can right next to each other about an inch down as shown here. If you don't have a drill, no worries. You can use a hammer and nail to get these holes in there. It'll work the same way. So what I did is I did two cans an inch down and the third can about an inch and a half to inch and three quarters down because it has to be taller than the boards at the top. So now we're going to make our holes in our three segment sign. So I'm laying my cans down and all I'm doing is taking a pencil and I'm transferring those drill holes onto the board. You do want to make sure that this is in the exact center. You can use a ruler to help. And as you can see, this top can goes above the top edge to allow for spacing. Now I did follow up with a little white marker so I could see my markings better. And then I'm just going to drill those holes as shown here and they're matching the can so now we're ready to go. So to attach these, I'm just going to use some standard zip ties from the Dollar Tree. You can get these in black, white, and they even have green now. It doesn't matter. They won't be showing in your project. So I feed the zip tie through the back on one of the holes. I'm going to grab my can, feed it through one of the holes in the can. Then I'm going to loop it right around it through the other hole in the can. And once that is um, shimmied down a little bit, we can put that tail right back through the back of the sign. Oh, no worries. You see my sign came a little bit disconnected there. We're going to hot glue that back in place no worries but we're just going to zip tie and secure that in the back for this piece and we're going to repeat this for all of our pieces now we're going to grab our cans making sure that the um can with the taller spacing is at the top we're going to zip tie them on and then we're going to flip the whole thing over to make any kind of adjustments and we can tighten it at this point too So once mine are nice and tight, I go ahead and take my scissors and I clip off those tails. Flip that back over, make sure everything is sitting nice and even, which it is. I'm very happy with how this looks. Now I wanted to add some accents to my cans. This is going to be what I'm going to be adding are these labels. You can get these from the Dollar Tree. They have assorted shapes and sizes. I wanted to add one to each one of my cans because I didn't want to distress it this time, but I did want an accent. So I'm going to add one of these really cute chalkboard style labels to each one of my cans. You're just going to smooth them out, make sure they're nice and secured to the surface. And then I'm going to add greenery of choice into each one of the cans. You can add anything that you love for this. It's all up to you. I love these little bundles. I think they're the perfect little accent for this decor piece. And now you're ready to display. Now just go ahead and hang your piece up and place it on display. I mean, how cute is this decor piece? Now, even though I place greenery in my can pieces, you can use this for organization in the kitchen, the craft room, or any other space of your choice. I really do hope you give this fun and easy project a try. inspiration photo for this project. Now I absolutely love this style of decor and the inclined fence design was so eye-catching. Now along with those beautiful rustic pots I thought that these elements would provide the perfect challenge for me to recreate so I headed to the Dollar Tree to pick up some supplies as well as other items that were less than a dollar to make this all come together. Now for this project, we're gonna need two of these 10 count, one gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's and these are 98 cents each. We'll also be using four empty tin cans. And we'll be using some poster board from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one of those packs of those 10 gallon stir sticks and I am going to mark a top peak for my fence picket and I'm gonna start and end this where that handle starts to curve. Now once that is drawn, go ahead and take it out to your saw and cut your peak. Now for the second pack, we are just going to open these because we will be cutting all these to size to make our fence design come together. 
So go ahead and lay out your grid mat and we'll be using this as a guide when laying out our fence sections. So un unbundle those fence sections and we want to make sure that we lay these with the markings facing you and the good side is facing down. So how we're going to lay these is we're going to space them one inch apart and each one of the sticks is going to be one inch higher than the last one to create our inclined direction and we're going to lay out with seven sticks in the beginning. And then we're going to grab one of those full sticks and I'm going to lay it right along the bottom edge and this will be the first level of support for our fence. Now we're just going to repeat this for the second and the third levels and we do want to make sure the curved part of that paint stick is actually over one of the sticks. Now once those are all laid in place just take your pencil and mark their placement so you'll know where to glue them. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to mark a line where they overlap that last stick by about a quarter of an inch and then mark where I'm going to trim off the excess on the end. Now once those are all marked, you can go ahead and cut these off. Now since I just had one stick, I am just going to cut these with a utility knife and it was fairly easy to do. And then and this is what you end up with with your three sticks cut at an angle and you just want to lay them back down and line them up with your marks that you made. And once they're all laid out, I'm going to be using my Surebonder hot glue gun with the Surebonder wood glue sticks for this project. Now to bond these in place, I'm just going to apply some of that hot glue to each one of those picket sticks. And then I'm going to lay that one stick that we cut right on top, making sure you fit it along the lines that you marked. And then you're just going to repeat this for the remaining two sticks, making sure that you lay them out as evenly as possible. And here are all the sticks fully bonded. And then I'm going to grab two more of those pickets and I am going to place these right next to picket number seven that's right at the top. Now to hold these in place it's a good idea to take like a roll of some painters tape and put it on the back of the stick. Now I did, did do this for some of the other sticks and I don't believe I did show you guys I'm sorry about that but it's a good idea to uh, tape those down so they don't shift. So now we're going to connect that sixth picket to the seventh picket and you see our sticks were originally too short. So what we're going to do is take additional stick that we had and we're just going to line it up with that angle and we're going to overlap that next stick by a quarter of an inch and then we're going to mark the alignment at the end of that first stick that we had. So we're just going to mark three sections to join that last stick to stick number seven. So what we're going to do is cut these out with our utility knife and now we have all three sections and I've numbered them so I'll know where to place them and I'm just going to stick them in place and as you can see they do overlap by a quarter of an inch because we want that other end to be able to hold an additional stick to join the other two pieces. Now you just take some hot glue, put it on each end and you want to put it in place making sure that the angles are nice and even and that they match. And then I'm going to place some of that hot glue down the seam for extra security. And then I had some of these extra craft sticks left over. I hold on to all of my scraps. I know I have a problem. <laughs> but what I did is I took those craft scraps and I'm just going to um, add them on that seam. And this is just for a little bit of extra stability on that steam, that seam. So now we're going to grab an additional paint stick and this is where we're going to cross those last three sticks and I'm just going to measure a distance from the end of that first stick to the end of the pickets. Now I can get two pickets, two of these pieces out of one stick and a third one out of the third because you don't want that curved part on there. So once all three pieces are measured and cut out with your utility knife, you could place those in place right on top. Go ahead and hot glue them in and put glue in those seams. And I'm just going to take some more of those scrap craft sticks and place over that seam just so they'll be nice and secure. So here is the piece all hot glued together and it is ready to go. Now to have a little bit of extra reinforcement, I'm just taking my staple gun and I'm applying a staple everywhere where the sticks overlap. And this is how it looks so far. And this is what it will look like when all the staples are applied. 
Now for my second backup of security, I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue at that seam where the wood sticks come together. This is just a little bit of added extra stability since we will be holding a little bit of weight on this piece. So now we can go ahead and work on our can. So grab one of the cans and the placement will be where the top rim will touch that second stick. And there will be a can between the first two sticks, the second two sticks, and the third two sticks, and then that last one. So I'm gonna mark down about an inch and a half from the edge onto the stick pattern, uh, fence pattern, and then I'm gonna put two dots on each side. Now, once you have those first two dots um, put in place, I'm just taking a scrap piece of paper and laying it where I would lay my can. I'm gonna rub those dots against that paper and they will transfer right on there. Now, this is gonna be used as a template to transfer over to where we're gonna place our second set of cans here. I'm rubbing that paper against it and as you can see, those dots do transfer. So I'm gonna do it for the first three dots on the incline. I'm gonna rub them on and then trace them on. Now for the last one, we are going to actually put our can right on that center stick. So once we place it there, we're gonna line it up with that middle stick in the middle. And then I'm just gonna place two dots about a half an inch apart. So now that our dots are all marked, we are gonna drill holes where those dots are because we will be securing these with straps. So we're gonna just quickly drill out all of those holes in there. Now, if you don't have a drill, you could also use a nail and hammer a nail in there to get a hole as well. You just wanna make sure that it's big enough for a zip tie to go through. So now everything is drilled, we can go ahead and paint our fence and I'll be using some of this nutmeg brown and some of this black and I'll mix them together to make a nice dark brown. Now this will be an undercoat, so I just wanna make sure I put this and try to cover up as much as I can. It doesn't exactly have to be neat. You just wanna make sure you cover it up because it will be showing through uh, under our weathered coating and this is what it will look like when it's all painted. And now that it's all dry, we can start working on our weathered finish. And I'm just going to be using this white acrylic paint. And I'm just going to be using this chip brush to apply it. So I'm going to dip my chip brush into there. And I'm going to remove most of that paint from the brush for our mostly dry brush. And as you can see, when I wisp it across those, those pickets, it creates this really worn weathered look. And you want to do this for all your pickets and in between until the whole fence is covered. And now that our fence is finally dry, we can move on to the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take my cans and I will um, determine their placement. So once I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is place it on the fence and once I get it aligned where it goes, I'm gonna flip it over to the back. Now what I did is I just put a little dot of that paint right on one of these little scrap sticks and I have a fine paintbrush from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in those little screw holes where I touch the can and this way the whole screw holes will be transferred onto the can and we know where to screw our holes to attach them. Now I am gonna mark the cans as I go so I know what level goes where. Now you do wanna repeat this for all of your cans, making sure you mark those and marking the level on the outside so you know where to place them. And then for the final can, mark those two dots and we're good to go. So now that we have everything marked, I'm just gonna take my drill and I am going to drill in those holes where I marked on each one of the cans. And now all our cans are drilled and ready to go. Now I am gonna be covering my cans, so I'm gonna transfer those place markings to the inside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this poster board from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be transforming it to look like galvanized metal. Now I just spray painted it with some silver uh, or aluminum color spray paint and then I dabbed it with a paper towel while it was wet to create this texture. Now it's really simple and easy to do and it dries super quick. Now I do have a quick demo showing how to do this and I will link it up in the top right hand corner of this video and I'll also link it in the description box below. 
So again, I'm gonna lay out the grid mat and grab that painted poster board and one of my cans. Now all I'm gonna do is take that can and I wanna lay it along, along the edge and I wanna mark the distance and length of that can um, on that poster board, giving just a little bit of playroom. Then take my straight edge and I wanna connect those markings and then I just wanna cut those out. Now using your X-Acto knife and a straight edge to do this will give you the best result. Now once that piece is nice and straight and cut out, you just want to trace the dimensions of that piece onto the board and cut a second strip. So now grab one of your cans and what you want to do is just to start to roll that poster board around the can because you want to determine how much you will need to wrap up the entire can. So once that poster board overlaps about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, you want to make a mark at that point. Then take your ruler and your X-Acto knife. You want to join up those markings and then cut it um, down the middle and it ended up being cut about right in half. So now we can start to apply it to the can and you do want to make sure that your seam is in between the two drill holes in the can. Just apply some of that hot glue right in between there and start um, applying the edge of that poster board sheet to the can. You do want to make sure that it is covering the top and bottom edges. Now, once that first strip is secured, you just go ahead and apply another strip of that hot glue every few inches. Just keep wrapping it around the can really tight to make sure it's secure. Then at the end, put another generous amount of hot glue, making sure those edges are overlapped. And now you have one completely covered can and this is what it looks like. Now another trick I used was using this bone folder tool. It's a common tool used to make paper flowers and you can use it to curve the board to ensure you don't have any creases. So if you do have one of these, it's a good tool to use to pre-curve all of your boards to prevent any kind of creases in it. And then once all your cans are covered, just do any last minute trimming and clean up and you are done. You just wanna make sure all four of your cans are nice and covered. Now when we did cover our cans, we did cover our holes. So I'm just taking this little poker tool that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm poking it from the inside just to transfer those holes and then I'm making them wide enough um, for a uh, feed through. So I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and my poker tool and making sure you could see all of those holes from the outside. So to attach our cans, we're gonna be using these zip ties and I got these from a Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna start at the very top of my uh, fence. So I'm gonna poke a zip tie through the back of the fence, through the top hole of the can, back through the bottom hole of the can. And then when that strap, when that's strapped in, you just go ahead and place that zip tie through the bottom hole of the fence. Now, once it is there, just connect the back and squeeze and um, place that zip tie in place. You don't want it totally tightened just in case you need to make any adjustments. Then for the second can, we're gonna do the same thing. Now these go side to side, so you just wanna insert one of those zip ties, insert it through one side of the can and out through the other, and then back through the back of the fence through the other hole. Again, you wanna secure that zip tie in place, not too tight, but just enough to secure it while you work. Now you wanna repeat this until all the cans are attached, and once they are, you can go back and tighten everything up. And then take your wire clippers or scissors and snip off all of those zip tie tails. So now what I'm gonna do is add a little rustic trim to my containers. Now in retrospect, I should have painted these before I attached them, but I was just so excited seeing all this to come together that I didn't even think about it until they were attached. But what I'm gonna use is some of this red, nutmeg, brown, and black, and I'm gonna mix them until I get a rust color. Now it wasn't rust enough, so I did add some harvest orange to it to give it a more red rustic color. Now I'm just gonna dab off some of that paint and then start tapping that color around the top and bottom edges of all of my cans. Now this will be the beginning of how we achieve our rust look. So we just wanna apply a nice good coating to the top and bottom. 
And here are all the cans with that first layer. You wanna dab off more of that paint for a more dry brush. And then we're gonna apply another layer right underneath it just to look like the rust is kind of spreading around on those cans. You can put it on the can in the middle. You can do little lines. Just make it look as realistic as you want. Now, after that is done, I'm mixing a little black into the rust color and I'm going around the top and bottom edges. Now, where rust usually originates, it's usually darker than the rest of the area. So this is just to help it achieve a more realistic look and look more like my inspiration piece and this is what it will look like and this is when the everything is nice and dry and you can see that rustic farmhouse feel of this piece now to hang the piece, we are going to flip it over to the back and I'm gonna put a loop at the second stick at the top and the second stick at the bottom. So to do this, I'm using some of this thick jute twine with knots tied on each end. I'm just gonna fold that in half and I wanna place that right on top of that middle stick, right on that second stick at the top of our fence. And I'm gonna be applying this with a couple of staples on each side with my staple gun. Now I made the loop really small so you couldn't see it from the other side, but it is sufficient enough to fit on a nail that's mounted in the wall. Now you just repeat this for that second stick down at the bottom. You just wanna place it right there in the middle and staple that into the place as well. And here are both loops in place and it's ready to hang. So now we can decorate our piece. So I have some bundles of boxwood that I got from Walmart for 98 cents. And you could just add these to the little pots. I just think this is such a great contrast with the bright green and the rustic color. This looks amazing. Then of course, if flowers are more of your style, I did find these cute little daisies at the Dollar Tree and I put one of those in every other pot. Now I'm a sucker for wildflowers and I love yellow, so I placed some of those in there and I really love this combination too. Now if you are a sunflower fan, no worries, I got your bag. Put some sunflowers in with those boxwoods and it would look amazing. Now you could do anything you like with this. You can even add any kind of greenery you like. And now we can hang up the final project and enjoy it. Now I really love the way that this turned out. Now there is so much detail and so many textures in this piece and it makes it really stand out. And I think that the finish on the fence turned out so awesome and it really looks like weathered wood. And those pots, now they're really the start of the star of the show with a realistic galvanized rustic look and they were so easy to make. Now all you have to do is top off with some greenery or filler. I mean, your choice, it's really, really up to you. Now you can even use this for craft supplies, some art tools, or even in the kitchen. Now the possibilities for this are endless. Now be sure to let me know in the comments what different ways would you use this piece in your home. This project is a vertical wood plant display. Now we're gonna need two packs of the five gallon paint stir sticks for 98 cents from Lowe's or just use one pack plus one extra paint stick. We're also gonna need two clean tin cans. So first thing we're gonna do is take three of those paint stir sticks and we wanna line them up evenly. Now I do wanna make sure I cut off that curved part which equals about 17 inches and here are all of my paint stir sticks nice and cut and ready to go. Now I'm gonna take that third paint stick and I wanna lay it right, atop, right on top across there and I wanna mark the length of that because I'll be cutting two pieces to fit across the length of these stir sticks at the top and at the bottom. So now we're going to adhere these together. So I'm gonna place the good side down and I'm using my carpenter square that I got from the Dollar Tree to make sure it's nice and square. So to bond these together, you can certainly use some craft sticks, but I have two extra one gallon paint stir sticks that I had, and I'm just going to align them along that seam. So what I'm gonna do is apply some of my Sherbinder hot glue gun, glue, and then I'm gonna place a, a generous amount of that hot glue on that gallon stir stick and place it along the seam on the back. Now once those are 
in place and good to go we're going to flip it over to the good side and we want to apply those two small pieces now you do want to apply these with the numbered side facing the good side of the, our plank and then place them about a quarter of an inch from the bottom now you want to do this on both sides So now that our little holder is ready to go, we are going to stain it. I'm going to apply one good coat of my Jacobian Stain by Minwax with my rag. And you just want to make sure that you get in all those crevices, especially along where those cross pieces are across the top and bottom. And don't forget to get those sides as well. So now that it's all stained, you can sit it outside to completely dry. So while that dries, we're going to go ahead and work on our can. So I'm going to take my two cans and I'm going to place two marks at the top with my little Sharpie just to drill two holes. I want to mark where I'm going to drill two holes so that it'll attach to our holder. Now I want to repeat this for both of the cans. Now if you don't have a drill, you can certainly just use a nail and a hammer to make a hole, but I'm going to use my drill to drill those holes out. And once that first one is done, you want to repeat this for that second can. So now that both cans are done, we can go ahead and paint them and I'll be using my white chalk paint. Now, what I'm going to do is apply um, that first coat just all over the can. Now, I do advise you do not hold your can the way that I did here. Those inside edges can be kind of sharp, so make sure you wear gloves or protect your hands when you do that. Now, you also want to make sure that you do paint the bottoms too because they will be showing in your project. So once that first layer is on, apply a second layer and then allow them to completely dry. And here are our cans all ready to go. Now I wanted to add a little accent to my cans to showcase those ridges. So I'm going to be using some of this elephant gray acrylic paint uh, to do that. Now you certainly can sand it with a sanding block, but I have an old sanding block here. What I'm going to do is paint a little bit of that elephant gray um, paint on there and then I'm going to just stamp it onto the can and what it does is highlight those ridges for me. Uh, again, you can use sandpaper, but I like the stamping method a little more. I didn't want that shiny metal coming through. So once that dries, so what I'm going to do is access, accent this with a little bit of ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to wrap it around one of my cans. I'm using some burlap here and I'm going to um, just cut two strips to wrap around my cans and then I'm going to end up folding it in half. Now once I do fold it in half, I'm going to start wrapping it around my can, making sure that I start at the back where we drill those two holes. Now to adhere it in place, all I'm going to do is apply some of that hot glue at the beginning and at the end. Now you do want to make sure your ends are nice and clean. So go ahead and apply some um, hot glue at the very end after you clip it down. Now to go on top of this, I'm using some of this neutral striped fabric um, from the farmhouse collection at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to go over that and I'm going to secure that in place with hot glue as well. Now I did want to keep this very neutral, but you guys can be as fun or creative as you like with your ribbons, colors, or even tags. And so here is one of my cans completed and just repeat this until both of the cans are done. So now our board is nice and dry and we're going to take our cans and I'm just going to line them up on the board and determine my placement. And once I do, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my um, chalk pen and I'm just going to um, make a mark through the holes that I drilled and transfer those markings to the board so I'll know where I will be placing it on the board. And now that all four of my holes are marked, I'm taking my drill and I am just going to go ahead and drill out those holes. So here are all four of my holes ready to go. Now before we attach our cans, I'm going to attach this jute string hanger. All I did was take a piece of jute string, tie a knot in the end, and I'm just going to fold it in half and place it right at the top of the board. Now to apply this, I'm just going to use my staple gun. I'm going to apply a couple staples on each end of that jute string right above that knot so it'll be nice and secure when it hangs. So now to secure our cans, I'm going to use a couple of these zip ties that I got from the Dollar Tree. These come in 60 a pack for only a dollar. So I'm inserting um, one of those zip ties through the back of the board first and then I'm going to insert it through the can 
um, one of the holes and out the other hole of the can and I'm going to repeat this for both of my cans. And then when they're both in there, go ahead and put the other end of that zip tie through the hole. So both of those zip tie strings will be in the back and then just secure them into place as tight as possible. Now, while you tighten this, you do want to keep making sure that it's nice and even on the front. And if everything looks really good, go ahead and clip those tails off the back and you are done with securing those cans to your board. Now to decorate mine, I'm just using a couple of these boxwood bundles that I got from Walmart for 97 cents, but you can use what any kind of greenery or decor that you like. I just think that this is super cute. And here is my simple but sweet little plant holder on display. And I think this is perfect for your small plants. Now, although this piece is cute for plants, you can use it to hold craft tools and even add labels instead of the ribbon. Now you can make one, two, or even three for your spaces and just keep those cans out of your landfills. Now these projects were all so much fun to share today, but you guys have to let me know which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Let me know in the comments below. Listen, I hope that you all were inspired by these creations and will give these projects a try. If you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now also be sure to subscribe by clicking on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.